Hi folks, uh, you're very welcome to the first of the Ingenio webinar series. Um, I'm delighted to welcome Tony Alikes, who is the VP from, uh, from SIFT, uh, responsible for the EMEA region. I'm delighted to welcome Tony to talk to us today about some of the things that she's been up to previously in her career, uh, some of the things that she's been doing since she joined SIFT uh, a number of months ago, and uh, some of the things that she's going to be doing going forward. Uh, Tony, you're welcome. Thanks a million for joining us. Thank you for having me, Rob. Great to be uh, great to be talking to you about, I guess, some of the things that you've done, some of the things that you're doing. Um, but I wanted to start off, uh, maybe to set the scene. Um, you might give uh, our viewers today just a bit of background in terms of, uh, I guess, your career, yeah. where you started, how you got into the tech space, yeah. uh, and, and I guess how you got to where you are today. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I started, I suppose, I, I, was, I lived in Dublin. Um, I did a degree in Dublin in business and Spanish. I didn't really know where I wanted to go. And I think that's a really important part of this, is that, you know, there's this view in life that everyone has to know very early on where their career is going to be. Yeah. Um, but I always knew I'd be, I had an appetite to be successful. So I wasn't really sure. Um, I got accepted to a master's, which I had just decided I wanted to do. It was an NUI go away. Um, it was one of the first masters in Ireland of its time. It was a master's in IT. Um, and so I moved down to Galway. I did that for two years and I loved it. And I realized, oh God, this is something that's really piqued my interest. Mm. Um, after that, during my master's, I decided I actually had an interest in going into SAP. So um, I joined an SAP consultancy based in Dublin. Um, and I worked between here and uh, Dublin and I did some projects over in Spain and Barcelona. Um, for the period of about three years. After that, my, my, um, my ambitions got a bit bigger and I moved over to London um, where I worked my way for the period of about, I'd say eight years through a number of different SAP consultancies, getting really good exposure in the market and understanding business a bit more. Yeah. Um, Always in, in sales? Or no, I was never in sales, so I was in consulting. So okay, I was actually a financially, finance and controlling consultant. So I was focusing on kind of the financial side of SAP implementation. Interesting, okay. Um, my first, I suppose, and I was always on the services side. So I wasn't selling the software, I was selling the services. So the implementation services, the outsourcing services of the likes of um, Capita, Sopra, all these kind of larger, larger um, outsourcing consulting firms. Yeah. Um, I then kind of did a little bit of a, a pivot. And I, for one day, I just decided, I'm going to apply to Google. Right? So I applied to Google. I didn't really know what I was applying for. Yeah. Um, and I got the job. Now, I joined at the time. It was called Google Enterprise. It is what everyone and all of us know today as Google Cloud. Okay. Um, but this was well before cloud was, a, cloud was even a thing. This was a notion. So it was a very hard role um, because we were truly the startup within Google, right? And um, cloud was something which, uh, it was a very hard thing to sell. It was my, sorry, it was my first sales role as well, okay, I should, right, say, I okay. should say. So, so that was a big pivot. So it was a big, big pivot. Yeah, yeah. Firstly, going into the software, software side and yeah. then going into sales. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we were selling cloud to people who loved to have their server in the corner or their server in the basement, it felt like they had ownership of their data. And we were selling this thing, which was like, oh God, it, 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 a lack of control. Where is my data? Yeah. How is it going to be used? So it was really at the forefront of digital transformation and innovation. Um, and that's, I suppose, where I got my taste for innovation and uh, disruptive technologies. And that kind of, I think, was the biggest step in my career to where I am to here today, you gotcha. know? Yeah. And um, so that's how I got into tech, you know? I then moved from, from, so I was in the UK, I moved back to, to Dublin as a country manager within Google, um, where I led how Google Enterprise was gonna, um, I suppose, tackle the, the, the Irish market, um, which was a three or four year role, and really, really interesting, kind of that scale piece. So mm -hmm. my first opportunity to kind of scale a business, um, after Google, I moved to Dropbox, where I did kind of much of the same, okay. you know, but the difference was it was taking a consumer product and bringing that to the business world. So it was like B2C to B2B transition, but yet scaling again, yeah. growing a team, scaling the business. Um, and then I joined Amazon. So Amazon was 
you know, people think about tech companies and it's something I underestimated when I joined Amazon. Um, but they join, they think tech companies are all the same and you do the same thing. Mm. So I joined Amazon as another American tech firm. I joined Amazon Pay. I was scaling the Amazon Pay businesses across UK and Ireland. Um, and what I underestimated actually by my decision to join Amazon was the exposure I was going to get into payments and fraud. Okay. It is a completely different kettle of fish. Um, and I learned so much from Amazon. I understood how, um, you know, a friction, friction within a customer journey can really truly impact the customer experience mm. and the, the financial output for the organization. Conversion drops if you put, if there's incorrect friction in there. And Amazon, I think we'd all agree, um, <laughs> you know, they cracked it in terms of the one click checkout. Yeah, so yeah. fascinating experience in Amazon. Wow. Yeah. One thing um, strikes me there listening to you, you've been, uh, you've been in business, big, huge businesses, mm -hmm. but you've, you've typically done the kind of the new thing or the startup thing or the builder. Is that like, is that your expertise now going into a big organization that probably has lots of process structure, but actually firing up a new yeah. vision or a new unit? So, I suppose, you know, you become, you do things a number of times and you become yeah. somewhat expert at it. Yeah. Um, it's probably a byproduct of having, of what I enjoy, yeah. right? Yeah. So I get bored very easily. <laughs> I don't like complacency. I don't like monotonous jobs. I don't like coming into work and doing the same thing every day. So yeah. I need excitement. Yeah. I need a challenge. I love a challenge. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I think there's some people in my personal life that would say, Oh, could you not choose something a bit easier, Tony, for yourself, you know? Yeah. Um, but for me, that's it. that makes it exciting. And that makes me want to get out of bed in the morning to go to work. So um, it's not an intentional choice, but I think it's a byproduct of what, yeah. what, what makes me tick. Yeah, yeah. You know? So, so um, you know, you, you've, <clears throat> excuse me, you've done, uh, you've done a number of these uh, adventures. Yes. And... An organization from San Francisco mm -hmm. came knocking at your door yeah. called SIFT. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, maybe before talking about that, you know, maybe tell us a little bit about SIFT yeah. as a business and, yeah. and I guess the, the, the industry, the clients that you yeah. guys serve. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, what is SIFT? Um, SIFT is um, a, it's an organization which focuses on digital trust and safety. So um, what does that mean? You know, um, I think if you think about how an organization needs to grow, right? Um, and then, you know, typically when you grow, friction becomes part of, of that process. Yeah. So um, there's a, I think where we focus is, we focus, our main focus is on reducing um, any form of customer friction where it is not necessary, right? Ensuring that the organizational effort to deliver that low friction is minimum. Yeah. Um, and really, I suppose, setting a platform for growth within an organization. So um, if you take that down another level, um, how do we do that? So machine learning, artificial intelligence is at, the, is at the forefront of everything we do. And that's one of the big exciting parts about SIFT and what excited me, you know? Yeah. Um, and we have a solution which enables us to very, very early on in the customer journey, um, identify those, those people that go out there to create malicious, malicious intent okay. um, to individuals, to consumers, but also to businesses. Um, and we provide a layer of protection and safety um, through automation, through machine learning, and through our knowledge and our global network of customers mm. um, that um, a lot of other organizations can benefit from. So, you know, who are those customers? You yeah. mentioned that. So, yeah. you know, we've got, we've got thousands of customers. Um, and, but the ones that, you know, that I suppose everyone looks to, to talk about big logos, you know, Airbnb, you know, LinkedIn. Wow. Okay. Um, there's, there's a lot of EMEA customers and you can see us like, you know, we focus a lot in the financial services space. And when I talk about financial services, I mean the new innovative the new breed of financial services, cryptocurrency, yeah, you know, yeah. um, new innovative banking practices that, that, that are coming out. Um, we also focus very big in the content space. Now, content fraud is a really interesting emerging market. Wow. So if you think about a marketplace and fraudulent ads, 
And the intent of those fraudulent ads is to get someone to transfer money to them, right? And the, the individual who does that transfer never gets anything, right? right? So we have a platform which enables us to, um, to track and understand and tell our customers that is not a real person. That is a fraudulent individual that is posting that content. Um, and you shouldn't allow that happen on your, on your, on your, on your platform. Um, and marketplaces are spinning up all over the place. So, yeah. Yeah. you know, we're very much at the forefront of, um, of fraud and digital trust and safety. Um, and I think you can see I'm quite passionate about the yeah, value yeah. we can bring and, and yeah. the problems we can solve globally. T tell me um, in that space, you know, where you talk about, you know, you talk about friction, you talk about fraud, you yeah. talk about safety, security. Yeah. Is, it, is it the realm of the huge enterprise businesses, the, the Airbnbs, the LinkedIn's that you've mentioned, mm -hmm. or does it, does it disseminate right down to very, very small, you know, maybe indigenous retailers or, or like, does it scale? Does, does the stuff that you guys do scale? Oh, absolutely. You know, I think um, we focus on all market segments. So we focus SMB and mid-market and then strategic enterprise. Oh, right, okay. If you look at how fraudsters operate though, so um, I would stress to you all, if you have an interest in this, we've recently published our digital trust and safety index. You can find it on our website, zip.com, um, where we produce our annual findings, right? And in this report, we talk about the fraudiest day of the year. The, okay, the, the fraud fraudiest day of the year. Fraudiest day. Now, Robert. No, wow. Well, there's a. What there's would a you word think is the fraudiest day of the year? Well, I guess it's probably like a, a, a Black Friday, right? Or or. Incorrect. No. It's the sixteenth of August. Okay. And the fraudiest day of the week. When would that be? You know, I'll tell you. Yeah. It is very early mornings on a Saturday. And the reason and the, the reason why this is so interesting is because fraudsters are operating at a pace none of us can keep up with. They are trying to catch people, small enterprises, because firstly small, they know they haven't got the controls in place. Yeah. So don't be fooled to think that because yeah. you're small, you're 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 immune to it. Absolutely not. So, so when um, you least expect so it, when you least guess, expect it. they know what weekends yeah. there's less staff on. Yeah, okay. To monitor these orders that are coming through and decide whether they're good or bad. Um, the 16th of August, it's in the middle of a holiday season. Less staff, less focus. They, everyone knows that like at the times of like those peak retail times, yeah. everyone kind of gears up for fraud in Q4. That is completely not the case. We've got to the point with, with global commerce that we need to have a constant level of yeah. digital trust and safety within our organizations to protect your organizations and to protect your customers. Because if your customers get, uh, if fraudulent activity happens on your site, the people that are gonna suffer most are your customers. Because you're gonna end up having to stop taking orders, which yeah. is gonna affect your good customers, so they will just go straight to your competitors. My God, it's, it's uh... It's fascinating. I'm learning two things here. One, that fraudiest is a word. Fraudiest, yeah, well, it is I, now. I, I love that. And secondly, that uh, I guess when the guard is down, you know, when you least expect it, that's it, is when you should expect yeah. it most. Exactly. And to combat that, you need to always be ahead of the game. Interesting. You know. So, so look, taking all that into into context, right? I mean, um, hugely interesting. Very new. Um, you know. What was it, uh, you know, what was it when SIFT approached you yeah. to join them? What was it that kind of, you know, that, that sealed the deal yeah. for you? Yeah. Well, I suppose I'll start from the beginning because yeah. um, it, it wasn't one thing. Okay. It was kind of a process. Um, I will never forget it. I, I wasn't looking. I was not on the market. I was in Amazon. I was happy. Um, and I had kind of a, a timeline in my head as to when I would look for my next opportunity, but it was about the 26th of June last year, okay. and I got an email on LinkedIn. I get lots of emails on LinkedIn, LinkedIn mails about jobs. Yeah. Um, yeah. And some I read and some I don't, but this one I opened. And I didn't know SIFT. I didn't know them, I'd never heard of them, but something in the job spec piqued my interest, and I thought, oh, they're worth a the chat. Yeah. So I spoke to our head of recruitment, um, and, I was really, I, again, I thought, yeah, okay, I'll have, I'll have a further, I'll have a, another discussion about this. I started to do some market research. So I think, um, you know, where we are in the market, in terms of, you know, the market for fraud, if you look at the total 
value of online commerce right now in comparison to physical global commerce, 16% of it is online. Okay. Now that's, if you think about how our lives have currently that's changed staggering, isn't it? versus five years yeah. ago, it's only 16%. Yeah. Okay. So market at, at, mar, at that point in time, market potential is massive. I'll talk about what's currently happening in the world soon and how that's going to affect global commerce. Um, so it was market potential and the market for fraud, um, and if you, there's a lot of Gartner studies on this, is, is over the next three to five years is going to only skyrocket, yeah. right? So not the market for fraud, I should say, the market for fraud prevention um, and our category of digital yeah. trust and safety. Yeah. Um, so that was one thing. So I knew there was a market potential. Two, you know, we've spoken about I like the scaling side. Um, I get excited by it. Um, I'm, so that was an interest to me. I think, you know, I got to the point, I had done large organizations. I've had Google, Dropbox, Amazon, amazing logos. I'm so grateful for the experience that I had in those companies. But I was ready for something smaller, something yeah. scrappier, something yeah. that I could really get my teeth into. So I was appealed by, by, by the role and the scope of the role. And then, and then finally, it was, it was the people. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, the people are the process. So the one thing which, and it still stands to me, um, and I'm reminded by it on a daily basis, is that our business is filled with people that are equally as passionate as me, if not more passionate than me, yeah, about problem. solving this problem. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I want to work in an organization which is, is not just selling something. We're solving the problem, right? I feel that um, um, that you know we have to we have to have trust and safety at the forefront of everything we do in life, mm -hmm. especially right now. Physical trust and safety in the like in, in, in with the likes of coronavirus yeah. and digital trust and safety to trust us digitally. Yeah. Um, and so I, the people I met were were so passionate about what we do. Um, in one of my interviews, I spoke to our founder Jason Tan, and his line to me was, I look forward to working with Tony to make the internet a better place. That line has stuck with me. Yeah, that's, that's, okay? that is powerful. You know, our appetite is to be the security layer of the internet. And I have no doubt that we will get there. Um, I want to just revert back to one thing I mentioned, um, Rob, which was around um, the global world right now with this pandemic of, of coronavirus, which, which is happening to us all. And if you look at, I suppose, the impact of that, on, on society. Mm -hmm. So we're told to, to focus on social distancing. Um, I, am, I really feel we have a social responsibility to listen to the guidance and react to try and combat this, this, this virus. Yes. Um, but what does this do to trade? It pushes more online, which creates more opportunity because we know that fraudsters act in the times we least expect it and the times we're least prepared for it. Yeah. So are we prepared for fraud right now? not the top of everyone's mind mm -hmm. so we have to ensure that we are equipped to deal with how this is going to have an increase in online trade what security layers do we need to put in place as organizations and as leaders yeah. and to ensure that we are protected and our customers are protected so yeah. i think it plays out the whole the whole thing plays <clears> out it's really well said it's a great point a great point um so 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 you're at sif now um how long how long were we there I started on the 6th of Jan uh, November, so nearly four, November. four and a bit months. Okay. And um, I guess, you know, uh, lots of the people who are tuned in today, um, I think, are, are, are really interested in hearing about you building and scaling a, a, a SaaS business in, in the EMEA region or in the European region. Um, kind of cast your mind back to November last year. So, yeah. so I guess it's, it's, it's day one. Yeah. Uh, you're on your own here in, in, in Dublin. Yeah. Um, talk me through the emotions, yeah. you know? Yeah, so so it was 6th of November. It was day one. I was in San Fran, actually. Oh, okay. I started in San Fran, but okay. uh, just went over for a week just to kind of get to know the business. And it was interesting. I'd been asked a few times before. I was like, what's your plan, Tony? You know, <laughs> before I joined. And I, cause I, had a really, I had quite a long uh, notice period with Amazon. So I was engaged with SIFT in the process. So what's your plan? And I was like, Oh yeah, um, yeah. No, I'll get there. I'll get there. I don't have a plan yet. Um, I think you'll all see I'm quite a, a an extroverted, loud, vocal individual. Um, but I consciously made a decision to 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 go into this and listen and learn and see. Um, I wanted to see 
what SIFT was like on the inside. Yeah. You know, um, I wanted to ensure that I built a business which was aligned to where we are uh, as an organization as a whole and um, where we are culturally and, and ensuring that I was delivering to the leader's expectations um, within SIFT in the US. Yeah. So, um, you know, when I went in on day one, um, probably had two thoughts. So I knew I was joining a startup, um, but I walked in and I was like, in my induction day, I was like, okay, it's a startup. Oh, wow, this is a pretty well-informed, well-educated, um, this is a startup that's, that's got its stuff together, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, and I was really pleasantly surprised by that. You know, we have strong values as an organization um, and we really know where we can play and where we can win and how we need to do that. So about building a repeatable business um, and not having a shotgun approach and a, and a fire and all cylinders approach, very much a focused, diligent approach yeah. to actually succeeding and growing. Um, so that was one thing I felt. And the second thing I felt, which um, was around the people, you know, I've spoken about that already, but when I walked into the office that day, I was so pleasantly surprised. Um, I, was, I wasn't pleasantly surprised because I, I had already you got made that yeah. opinion, yeah. but I was, yeah. I was happy that it was, um, my opinions were correct, yeah. you know? So I wasn't surprised by either of those things because they were the emotions about, and the decision I'd made to join the company. I was happy that the decisions I'd made were correct. Yeah. You know, so, so, so it was so a bit of like, okay, yeah, this is okay. I've done the right thing, yeah. you know? So yeah. that was first day, you good, know? Good. After that, you know, it's, 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 um, it's interesting being the first person in a region with no office, with no people, and we, we don't have much knowledge of the market. So that blank piece of paper thing, um, it's always a bit of a challenge and you kind of think, oh, what's the first thing I'm gonna write down yeah. in my plan? Um, so, you know, but again, I, I've, we, I have so much support from the US. Um, I have so much autonomy, but I have so much support. Um, and every decision is made with the support of the business behind me uh, and their belief in my ability to do this. You know? when, you, um, when, you, uh, when you look back at it, how, and, and we work with a lot of um, US headquartered software, SaaS business yeah. organizations, and in some instances, I guess, the view about what's going on in the MIA or the size of the opportunity, or you know how to forecast it. In some instances, it's it's very real and precise and accurate, and in some instances, it's like, well, we'll just take a U.S. approach to this. Yeah. How, how did SIFT? I mean, how did how did the leadership team in SIFT that you've obviously now become part of? But how did they view EMEA before you joined? So we have a good install base of customers in EMEA. Okay. So we had a good understanding, a limited but good understanding of what the market opportunity was. Yeah. Um, you know, I think everything since I've joined has been done in very much in conjunction with me and with, with my approval and with my, um, with my views on board. Um, however, I do see it as part of my role to ensure that I bring in a MIA lens to everything we do as an organization. Yeah, of course. So, of course. Um, you know, I've brought, there's many things that have, are higher up the priority list now that I'm on board. Um, and we have, you know, a team here, which is um, changing the priorities because it's easy to have a, um, I suppose, part of your customer base within the EMEA, but when you then suddenly have a team which is sitting there and solely focused on EMEA, it becomes more of a priority, you yeah, know? Yeah. What I will say is that with the SIFT as an organization, EMEA is um, an area we're putting a huge investment in. And we see the market opportunity is huge. Um, and I think for our growth, it's a massive opportunity for us and not something that we're taking lightly. We are investing significantly in the place. And one thing I want to touch on is actually is, is why Dublin, actually, because it's one thing we haven't said. And, yeah. you know, I, I think being an Irish person, um, I don't know if any of you saw the press release we launched recently with the IDA, but it's, worth, it's on our website. Have a look at it. Um, which is like, why did we choose Dublin as our, as our EMEA home? Yeah. You know, and I think um, we, there's a number of reasons, which is around talent, you know, um, that the talent we have here in Ireland is second to none. Mm -hmm. um, our access to the EMEA market, mm -hmm. Europe, Middle East and Africa is completely under our banner over here. Um, and with the likes of things like Brexit, which are, they do have an impact, um, yeah, but absolutely. sometimes a positive impact. Yeah. Um, and, you know, so 
Um, that's why we're here, you know. So I, I kind of diverted away from your original question, Rob. So, but I wanted to talk about that. No, look, I, look, I think that's, I think that's really important, right? And, 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 and I guess going back to, you know, going back to the scale, the growth piece. So yeah. I've heard you say a couple of things there. So the office, the, clearly the infrastructure. So yeah. you, you know, you, 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 you've probably gone through that process now. You guys yeah. are, are, you're in your own yeah. environment. That's yeah. now become a. A, 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 a very identifiable SIFT location. Yeah. And um, from a people perspective, how, how have you gone about, you know, I guess that, those problems? So I think I was asked recently, you know, um, how, because this is the first quarter that's like a, it's an active quarter, right? Yeah, so someone yeah. asked me recently, it was only the other day, I was on a, a, Zoom, a Zoom meeting. Um, which is the way we'll all be working these days now. Yeah, um, yeah. But thank God for technology. Yeah. Um, but uh, I was asked, how's your first quarter? And I said, okay, well, how's my first quarter? Mm, I said, well, at the beginning of the quarter, I had no office, no team, and limited knowledge of the EMEA market. Mm -hmm. I wrote for it now. We're not even, what are we? We are the uh, 12th of March, right? I have- Two weeks two, left. Two weeks left. Great. <laughs> <Right. laughs> Uh, so I have a team which is nearly at the end of ramp, a great team. I have an office location which is brilliant, yeah. really cool. I have an evolving culture which, um, you know, we're all finding our feet but it's getting there, it's fun, there's lots of interaction and um, we're learning about working as a team because there's a lot of different personalities and, and that's brilliant because that brings diversity yeah. um, to the table and, you know, we've got business to close yeah fantastic we've got business to close yeah. and to think that we had zero at the beginning of the quarter and we now have office culture people opportunities yeah, yeah. it's a great quarter yeah it's a great quarter yeah you know so so uh, you know i think i think uh you'd almost ask the question you know would you do anything differently um yeah I maybe i know the answer to the question already well, I, but don't I, mean, I think i don't know listen we I will never get everything right first time. Yeah. And I know there are things that I've done incorrectly, right? But I think at a macro level, and probably as time goes on, maybe after six months, I can probably call that. Yeah, right? sure, sure. I think right now, um, we're making, I'm having to make so many decisions and use my judgment to call certain situations. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that I think all we can do is learn from it, yeah, right? Yeah. And ensure that we evolve. Have I identified gaps yeah. in our, uh, in the big sift that we need to fix to make sure we are successful? Absolutely, yeah. you know? Yeah. Are we working on them? Absolutely. Sure. Um, we are extremely agile, we are extremely proactive. Um, but you know, this is this is SIF's first office outside of the US, yeah. right? Yeah. So this is an organization which is growing from a small to medium-sized organization. And if we didn't have growing pains, we wouldn't be human. Mm -hmm. And it's it's those little struggles and those little those little hurdles and problems that we solve that make us better and greater and give us the feeling of achievement and success in life. Love it. So we're working as a team to grow, to scale, um, and we're facing the challenges that are no different to any other organization going through this journey. No doubt. Um, yeah. But I don't feel exposed. I don't feel like I've made any big errors. Yeah. Um, and it's a journey though. Okay. It's a journey. Well, here, here's, um, from a recruitment perspective, I guess here's, the, here's probably one of my favorite questions to ask people, be it a client or, or, or a candidate. Um, and it's 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 in the, it's, it's in fact the polar opposite of the one I've just asked you. But what's the thing that you're most proud of um, that you've achieved in this you know obviously very short period of time? I think it has to be the people I've hired. Yeah. So I walk into the office and I hear them laughing. I hear chats going on. I see little splinter groups going off for lunches. Um, it's the people. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And it's it's seeing them get ignited with the passion that I have, yeah. right? Yeah. And seeing them on the calls with their customers, selling the dream, selling SIFT, yeah. like the, that is, you can't replace that, yeah. you know? I have a, an amazing team um, and we are all completely committed to, to, to the cause, yeah. you know, and to getting our message out there around digital trust and safety delivered by SIFT. Well, listen, what an amazing thing to be proud of, yeah. right? 
Yeah. Yeah. And 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 it's so um it's so unbelievably tangible, right? I yeah. mean, look, you're seeing it every morning. Every you morning. To work, yeah. Every morning. And and it's the, the last, you know, the last thing you see when you're yeah. when you're heading home in the evening. So Absolutely. yeah, I get it. Yeah. I get it. Um I know uh I know um looking ahead to to, to, to this year, mm -hmm. um I, I know one of the things that obviously has been big for you guys um in terms of I guess growing the brand and the presence and all the rest of it. Conferences, events, things like that are, are probably quite big to you guys. Huge. No, no doubt. Huge. Do, do you see, you know, are you seeing much of an impact in terms of, yeah. you know, what maybe the lack of events and, and, mm -hmm. and conferences? Are you, how, how are you going to address so that? I think all of, our, all of our big events, which create top of funnel opportunities and brand awareness, they've all been cancelled or postponed. Okay. Um, how are we reacting to that? So um, we are lucky enough to be an agile organization so yeah. we have pivoted all of our content we're hosting digital conferences um, and virtual conferences um you know we, we have no other alternative sure, sure i think um i think we just need to stay focused right keep working in the capacity that we are yeah um, i think this year is going to be a tricky year for everybody yeah. especially in the short term yeah. you know um but i think Panic isn't going to be the thing that solves it. I think we just need to put our heads down yeah. um, and, and, and work hard, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, I don't think it's going to, to have a massively detrimental effect to our year. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it makes it a little bit more difficult. Yeah, a sure. A bit more of a struggle, sure. you know? Sure. T tell me, I guess, um, you know, with, I guess, you know, with that aside, when, when you look at, at 20 and you look, you know, where do you, where's the where's the big opportunity for SIFT? Where, you know, what's the thing that, you know, you're saying to the guys, you know, in the office, um, you know, look, there's a particular industry or a particular mm. client or a particular kind of segment yeah. that you're going after. Like, is there one thing that you, you look at that gets you more excited than maybe most? So, um, not really necessarily. I think there's three main areas that we play um, yeah. in terms of, you know, the the where our biggest percentage of business and revenue is. Yeah. Um, one is financial services, which I meant, yeah. mentioned. Yeah. Another one is e-commerce. Okay. Um, and another one is travel, so online travel. Okay. Um, you know, the, there's areas there that could be at risk um, as a result of what's happening in the world. But at sure. the same time, they, you know, what's happening with the coronavirus is a short-term thing, right? It's not going to be a long-lasting yeah. thing. Yeah. We still have the need. I mentioned the need for digital trust and safety. It's not something we don't fill fix a problem yeah. you need to have it yeah. as a platform play yeah. Yeah. right yeah. so if you're going to build a business based on a digital platform in any form or manner you need digital trust and safety mm -hmm. so am i do, do i think i suppose where do do we focus it's those three industries and um, the markets as i said it's europe middle east and africa and um, i think we have there's some very big countries or areas within that where we're putting 80% of our effort right now. Okay. Um, and where I think we have uh, it, it, a quicker path to growth. Yeah. Um, and then we will move on to um, onto the remaining countries within the territory. Gotcha. You know? gotcha. um, and I suppose, you know, we come, you know, we play across all market segments. So if you look at the SMB space, it's about really working with, digital first organizations to, to cover up their vulnerabilities from, from a safety perspective. Mm -hmm. If we look at um, slightly larger organizations, it's um, ensuring that good enough, that, sorry, ensuring that they understand that good enough is not good enough, yeah, okay? Sure. Yeah. Because that is the big misconception. Oh, we have something, it's fine. Yeah. It's like, just because it's going to be disruptive to change something, it doesn't mean it's good enough, yeah, right? If yeah. you're looking at customer growth and you're looking at, um, sorry, company growth and, and customer protection, you need best in class, mm -hmm. right? And it's around changing sometimes how you think about how you deal with fraud, because typically the way fraud has been dealt with before in the past, fraud is dealt with when it, when it becomes a problem, okay? So it's at the end of the flow. Yeah. Um, but you've already, upset the customer, you've already affected the customer journey, 
and you're already affecting your bottom line because your conversions conversion rates low. Sure. Where fraud, where it needs to happen, is all at the beginning of the journey of the customer journey, uh, and that's what machine learning enables you to do in SIFT. That's how our model works. So we can tell you if an individual is is on your platform to create malicious intent yeah. before they have created malicious intent. Got it. Okay. So don't fix fraud when it's fraud. Fix it before it's fraud. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's in, that's in the kind of the, the medium sized market, and then on the upper end, you know, we have some really really large strategic customers, and um, we have a lot of interest in that market segment. And um, those those opportunities take take longer. They're they're very um, they're in a partnership type of approach, and we have a number of ongoing discussions. So um, I'm looking to achieve growth across every area. Um, but every segment kind of has a different style yeah. of growth. And yeah. um, you know, fast-paced, medium-sized, uh, you know, relationship building and partnership, and then more strategic and um, partnerships in the in the kind of strategic enterprise space. Interesting. That answers yeah, your no, question. Yeah, no, it does. It does. Um, before we kind of start to, yeah. to wrap up, I guess uh, again going back to to the theme of of you know why people have joined us today. What's, what is, if there's a girl or a guy out there who, who is, is like Tony Likes, who's mm -hmm. looking at an opportunity or starting to maybe become a little curious about opportunities and, and, and an opportunity to head up and lead mm -hmm. an EMEA division, you know, or, or maybe even start their own thing. Like, what's, having done all the things that you've done mm -hmm. at very large organizations uh, and, 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 and now SIFT, What's the what's the one thing that kind of jumps out that you would say to someone? Look, this is this is the Bible. This is a crucial piece of advice. Um, there's something. There's a I read. I I think I read it. I know I watched. Um, it was a TED talk or it was, it was something that I um read, and it was about six to eight months ago, and it's how I run my life and my family life. Um, and it's a line and it was used in education um, and it was about a story about this teacher um, when this this young boy was about seven right yeah. and this is the story it was told by this man who was in his 50s or 60s and there was this this man this boy he was in school and um, he was asked they asked a question and the teacher had a motto right and it was basically a line of 10 words that had only two, um, two letters in each word. And it was the most important line that they would ever remember in their life. Okay. And so they went through a week in school to try and understand what this line was. Yeah. And this man had lived his life by it since he'd ever understood what the line was. Okay. And the line is, if it is to be, it is up to me. So you know what? You've got to do it yourself. You've got to follow your dream. You've got to follow your gut instinct. Um, it took me to this point in my career to go out and take a role like this. I'd done it under the umbrella of very large organizations, yeah. less exposing, not on my own. Um, but everyone comes to things in their own time. So if you have an appetite, plot your journey, get your experience. Build up confidence in yourself so yeah, that when yeah. you come to this point, you don't feel exposed. You don't feel like an imposter. Um, because it's the, it's the first time I would say in my career that I, uh, not the first time, but I, I don't think I felt this empowered and this passionate Amazing. and this Amazing. ability to be successful ever in my career. And it's because of the company I work for. And if it is to be, it is up to me. Love it. I was going to try and hashtag that one there, but I think that might be probably one of the longest hashtags. It would be. Ever. And there's a lot of eyes. <laughs> Very exactly. confusing. It's I like mean, Mississippi. Oh, I love it. I love it. Um, you mentioned the family there. Yeah. Um, I, I, and I guess, you know, maybe taking a step back from work because, I mean, look, clearly this, you're all in in this thing right now. Yeah. And no doubt the. The the, uh, the global time zone clock is never never stops, never right? Stops. You're you're talking about a big region, Amelia. Yeah. Uh, I think we run what five hours from 
uh, one end of the yeah. time clock to the other, and then clearly HQ is is San, San Fran, Fran, right? So you're busy. And um, how how's how's balance achieved for yeah. Tony Lights? So you know, I suppose what does balance look like? Well, I you know I am all about my career. I love my career, but you know, put that aside. Um, yeah. But I am first and foremost as a mum, and I'm mum to my two amazing kids. So um, that is before work and that is after work. They are my balancing. They are my levelers. Yeah. Um, yeah. I love my weekends where we do um, just love, just just simple things, yeah. you stuff. know, just stuff. Yeah. Very busy stuff. A lot of driving around and you know <laughs> drop offs and drop offs here, drop offs there, lots yeah. of activities. Um, so you know that's my balance, right? Is my children. In addition to that, like I religiously start my day at five thirty a.m. in the gym, and um, that is good for me personally, for my mental space, um, and that gives me my personal balance. You know, right. I mentioned um, I kind of have weird and wacky ideas, and I kind of do things that I mentioned I like a challenge. Yeah. And last year, oh, it was July. I decided, ah. Oh, I've never run a 5K in my life. I'm not going to sign up for a 5K. No, no, I'm going to sign up, sign up for the Dublin Marathon. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So I spent the summer training for the Dublin Marathon. I got injured about five times. Um, I didn't think I'd be able to do the Dublin Marathon, but I did the Dublin Marathon. So, um, you know, I did it in a time that I never expected I'd do it in. Um, but we can always get better. So um, I am going to the D Dublin Marathon again this year. And I think in light of the advice we're given, which is social distancing and fresh air, I think my marathon training will be starting tomorrow morning. Ah, right? we love it. Yes, tomorrow love morning. So, um, you know, it's not something I could easily not do it, but I think it's a good thing for me to do it for me um, and gives me a little bit of um, headspace. Yeah. So kids, um, they're my number one. They're my everything. And then a little bit of exercise just to keep me sane. Fantastic. Amazing. So, so uh, October. Is October, it? yeah. October. So we we'll check back in and, and yeah. see what the significant time saving between yes. 2019. Yes, and 2020 hopefully it'll be large, but Amazing. we'll see. We'll see. Well, look, we wish you all the best with Thank the uh, with the training and um, and look. I think uh, you know on behalf of you know all of the team here at Ingenio and, and and no doubt everyone who's who's tuned in today. I wanted to say thanks a million. I think that is an unbelievably. Um, an unbelievably honest, searingly honest, uh, you know, appraisal and approach and review in terms of where you're at. Um, we we wish you and the team at SIFT all the very best of luck. And um, I wanted to thank everyone for tuning in today. It's This is, as I said, it's the first in, uh, in our series. Uh, we'll be doing these on a monthly basis. And I guess, look, the objective here is to help people who are working in the SaaS and software space really understand that the challenges the initiatives, the key things that are going on in this space uh, aren't unique. They can be shared and, and we're trying to help organizations share that approach. Um, thanks very much, Tony. Thanks again. Thank you, Rob. And uh, we'll speak to you soon. Absolutely. Thank Take you. Bye-bye.